Welcome to our last lecture of the semester. In this lecture, I'm going to try to sum up what we've learned, what the key ideas were, and what we can take away. To start with, there's two really big ideas that I think are the most important things to take away from this class. And they're ideas that don't just apply to programming in this class, but to programming in any class or in any setting that you might go on to. They even apply to lots of other disciplines outside of programming, although we're not going to focus on that. Those two big ideas are first, that we can apply a step-by-step -step process to solve our problems and use that step-by-step -step process to break down the problem from the initial statement of the problem to a completed solution and get the answer correct. And second, that when we write programs, we can structure our programs by following the structure of our data. We put those two ideas together to produce the design recipe that we saw many times, where we wrote down data definitions, wrote down signatures referencing those data definitions, wrote down templates that followed the structure of those data definitions, and then put together the program following those templates, checking that it worked with examples that we wrote down to help understand our problem. These two big ideas are the things that have served us well in solving all the problems in this course, and they're things that apply in any kind of programming. Whether you're programming in Java or JavaScript or C or Ruby, you can follow the structure of your data when you're writing the structure of your program. And you can also write down examples, signatures, data definitions, and follow the structure of your data to create skeletons or templates for any programming problem you come across. You can apply the ideas about writing down tests early in any programming language. And all of these habits of mind and habits of programming will serve you well in the future. Let's think about a few more specific ideas that we talked about as well. Here's four big ideas that we talked about for structuring programs. Writing down templates is a way of thinking ahead of time based on what our data says to figure out what we need to do to understand the program that we need to write. We don't even know what our program is supposed to do, and yet we can get a long way in writing it. Writing down examples and using those examples to become tests and doing that early on is a great way both to understand the problem that you're trying to solve as well as to ensure that when you do successfully solve the problem, you can check that you did it right. And if you didn't successfully solve the problem, you discover that early on by running the tests. Signatures and purpose statements are all about writing down what we want programs to do. This is just an instance of the general idea of writing down specifications, descriptions of what we're trying to accomplish. Writing down specifications is an invaluable part of effective programming, and it's one we've been doing since the beginning of the semester. In every programming language, you can write down something like a signature and a purpose statement, although in some languages you'll write that down as part of the language, and in some languages you'll write it down as a comment. In some languages they'll be checked to make sure you got it right, and in some languages it'll just be an aid to you thinking about and understanding your program. Finally, we talked about abstractions as a tool for thinking about and structuring our approach to programming. We've seen many kinds of abstractions, abstracting data, abstracting data definitions, abstracting functions. Abstraction is a fundamental idea. We were even applying this when we wrote our first functions. We were abstracting from a few particular examples of computations to come up with functions. You'll want to keep abstracting every time you see multiple examples of things that you're doing repeatedly. Once you have a few examples, you can turn that into an abstraction and save yourself effort by reusing that abstraction over and over again.
we also saw lots of examples of particular approaches to writing programs, whether those are particular kinds of data definitions, like lists, structures, enumerations, particular kinds of program elements like conditionals, local, or lambda, or particular ideas about how to write down a program, like using accumulators or using functions as inputs. Also, we saw many different kinds of data definitions that featured mutual or non-mutual recursion. We even saw generative recursion, where we broke away from our data structure-based programs in particular contained ways to solve harder and harder problems. All of these are valuable techniques to have in your bag of tricks as you go on and learn more as a programmer. You won't necessarily use structs or lists or cond or generative recursion in particular ways in other programs or in other programming languages. And things won't look the same when we write down local binding, functions as arguments, or mutual recursion in some other system. But all of these ideas share some common features and thinking about those common features will help us understand what we need to do in the future. Also, you'll be able to transfer your knowledge from these particular things, whether it's structures or mutual recursion or Lambda, to new programming languages and new tasks where things that are very similar to those will reappear again and again. You'll find that as you learn new languages and new techniques, you'll frequently see that they have analogs in what we've learned and what we did in beginning and intermediate student. Finally, we saw lots of particular examples of kinds of programs. I've listed a few here, like writing animations with Big Bang and images, writing particular higher order functions like map and filter, understanding sorting algorithms, constructing trees or prefix trees, or binary trees or search trees. We also saw examples of DNA compression, fractals, maps, highways. We've seen dozens of different kinds of examples, and we've seen how to use the principles that we've constructed in order to write programs that work in all of these situations, whether that's downloading data from the internet to create a real-time visualization, or reading in the works of Shakespeare to analyze it based on textual features. One of the key lessons that I think you can learn in this class is that the tools we've learned in just this semester are sufficient to build all of these kinds of programs and to use computers to answer numerous questions ranging from textual analysis to visualization to scientific computing. By learning the programming that we've done and by building our confidence to be able to start from a problem and produce a working program, we can now tackle all of these kinds of problems. Having completed all of these tasks, we're now in an excellent position to move on to all the things that we can do in the future in computing. Here at IU, you can major or minor in computer science or in informatics or in engineering and build on the knowledge that you have here. If you continue on in computer science, you'll learn programming in new languages like Java and C. You'll learn techniques from algorithms, data structures, logic, artificial intelligence. You'll apply your skills at programming and reasoning to everything from machine learning, to security, to networking, to operating systems, to compiler design. You'll learn how to structure programs that are not just a few functions, but can be thousands or tens of thousands of lines long, and prepare yourself to work on even larger and larger programs. All of these tasks, while challenging, build on the fundamental ideas that we've learned in this class. And those fundamental ideas are following a step-by-step -step process for 
going from a blank page to a working program and following the data that we see in front of us to structure our programs. It's been a pleasure to teach this class, despite the somewhat different circumstances than we, than we might have expected. It's been a great opportunity to work with all of you. I've enjoyed it immensely. Thank you very much.